Liz Brown Swanson. Thank you for tuning in to Around the Peninsula. This is a special wildfire preparedness report. You can see all the action behind me. L.A. County fire crews are here in the Palos Verdes Nature Preserve in Rancho Palos Verdes for three days of brush fire clearance drills, all to help protect our community and keep us safe in the event of wildfire. Today uh, I was a drill facilitator, so I actually uh, developed uh, the brush drill that we did today, um, and I uh, identified some of the resources we were going to be using, which uh, consisted of the local fire stations in the area. We also invited Torrance Fire Department and Redondo Beach Fire Department uh, as multi-agency drill. Uh, they will respond with us in some initial action areas, meaning they'll be part of the first response group of uh, fire engines that um, respond. The first part of the drill, we were interested in getting some of our fundamentals out to the folks again. It's a basic review. And so we met over at the Hellespot 53 Alpha, which is uh, near the dog park. And it's a nice open area for us to discuss and actually do a demonstration of how we supply water to the helicopters that respond on our brush drills. Uh, on our brush fires actually. And so um, we broke into small groups and we discussed uh, position uh, related skills and, and basically reviewed that with our guys. A big piece of that is our safety component. So we discussed safety uh, and what we wear, make sure everybody's ready, wearing the appropriate uh, personal protective equipment. Uh, we discussed helicopter safety around our Hellespot area which is very important. And we discussed some of the local weather and uh, topography and the fuels that are out here this year, which is why we're here. What's going on behind me right now is we're doing a drill or a simulation of our uh, helicopter hose fill lay for uh, filling up our helicopter with water uh, in case we happen to have a wildland fire up here on the peninsula uh, or even in Catalina. Uh, we will utilize this uh, hill of spot right here for both. This is hill of spot 53 alpha as it's determined and usually the engine company that will respond to this would be engine 53 which is over here by the Terranea uh, which is directly behind us here and what makes this one so valuable here is it's uh, the best hill of spot that we have in the whole Palos Verdes Peninsula area. Uh, part of it is due to the, the nice wind that we do get as you can experience right now uh, that we get coming right up here off of the ocean, which gives the helicopters a great lift. And without that, uh, they don't get up in the air, especially when you add all that much extra water weight to them. Um, so this is an excellent spot. Like we said, we utilize it for every place up here in Palos Verdes Peninsula and also over at Catalina. Um, the um, we were also discussing the fact of the hand crews. So sometimes these helicopters will come in and we will have hand crews with them that they will drop off up at the fire line uh, some places. Uh, and many times also though, those hands crews will also come in on buses uh, and then we can deploy them there just off of the ground. Um, those, those hand crews are wonderful for quick attacks on, on these fires and help us out uh, so we can get our hose up there and which then we can put, use the water. The other resources that we bring out to these fires are both Dozers. We have fire dozers that come out and they do great work with us too. They will come on on big uh, flatbeds. So one thing that we really, really ask the public is if there is a wildland fire, one, remember you're ready, set, go. And when we give evacuation orders, we really need to get you out because of multiple things that are happening. One, fire engines are coming in to the areas where you live. And these streets up here in Palos Verdes are very narrow and we need that access. Number two, the helicopters coming in, they're gonna blow wind, dust, everything around and it's gonna make it hazardous for you to drive. Number three, the fire itself, right? Could blow over and we don't know where it's gonna go yet. And number four, our bulldozers, those trucks are huge and we need to get those into definite areas. And just getting them even around the Palos Verdes uh, drive north, south, and uh, east and west, it's very difficult even with those things. So if we can eliminate all that traffic, that's the best thing for us to do. And remember, life is number one. 
let's save lives, worry about our properties and stuff secondary. Uh, the other issues that we have up here is our brush clearance program. So June, July, we'll be coming around and making sure that you clear your brush. That is so important to make sure that you keep that 200 feet clearance around your houses and your other structures because that's what's going to save them and also hopefully, you know, uh, with the life uh, safety parts of that too, control those fires. Um, we have a lot of overgrowth. We have um, our wildland areas, we want to call it, or our conservancy areas, right? We like the fact that this is like a natural wilderness here. That's why all that live here want to stay that way. But we have to maintain that clearance so that we can stay safe. Um, the other issues we have is like you, we have right now, the wind. The wind comes up and that will drive these fires a lot too. What's been affecting us a lot lately is the lack of rainfall. So a lot of our brush is a lot drier than it has been over the past uh, years. And so that is a major factor right there. Um, the one advantage we have here, uh, which we don't have in Malibu, is the Malibu area is a lot more wild, let's call it. Here, most of the property is owned by residential personnel, and so therefore, we, the irrigation has really helped us out. And that's one reason why you see the big fires in, Pals, uh, in uh, Malibu and not so much here in Palos Verdes. We've been very, very lucky, but let's hope that's not just luck. So part of why we do these drills here, we do this once a year and we do it for multiple days, is it's not only for the Los Angeles County Fire Department, but it is also for our cooperating agencies, such as today we have uh, Torrance here with us and Redondo Beach with us. Later we'll also have some LA City. Those are going to be a lot of our first responders coming in to this uh, if we have an incident up here in this. So learning and uh, being able to work together is a, a big major factor that we're looking at today and also it's just an annual thing we do to keep all of our skills up uh, the one nice thing about having the county fire department up here is that we are uh, all throughout the county and we always have personnel working here that are from other areas of the county and we go out in those other areas all the time too. For instance, we have patrol vehicles that are sent uh, out on certain assignments into other areas of the county. We have engine companies up here that will also go out to other areas. So we are always keeping up our skills that way, but this drill here gets us to coordinate and work together with our cooperating agencies in this area. My name is Jessica Panda. I'm the City of Rancho Palos Verdes' Emergency Services Coordinator, as well as the designated coordinator for the four Peninsula cities and as the city's emergency services coordinator I'm responsible for a variety of the city's emergency um, preparedness programs including including maintaining maintaining the city's emergency operations centers and and disaster notification sy systems as well as training city staff as the designated coordinator for the um, four Peninsula cities I also serve as a point of contact um, to share and um, disseminate information during times of emergencies as well as lead the um, Peninsula Public Safety um, Committee through tackling the many facets of emergency preparedness. City uh, Rancho Palos Verdes, we have a um, website um, dedicated to emergency preparedness tips as well. The city is um, very committed to the um, safety and well-being our, of our residents and um, one of the main things the city does is brush clearing year-round and this includes using up goats to actually trim hazardous vegetation that can act as fuel during a fire. In California, we know all too well that wildfires can occur at any time. There's no longer a wildfire season. In fact, um, the city of Rancho Palos Verdes is actually um, designated as the most populated the most populated city with 90% or more residents on uh, living in a very high fire severity zone. So um, wildfires can be really devastating. Another, another challenge that comes with being designated as a very high fire severity zone is um, it can also have financial consequences for our residents. This city's been hearing um, various reports from our residents saying that the local insurance companies have, have been raising their rates or dropping their coverage altogether. So, uh, so um, the city staff is also looking to coordinate with insurance companies to see how we can develop home hardening standards to make sure our residents keep and maintain a um, low rate of insurance even though the city is actually designated as a very high fire severity zone. I would advocate for residents to be prepared by following the Ready, Set, Go, the LA County Fire Department's program. 
Residents can get set by preparing um, their family emergency evacuation plan. So what this really means is just, just sitting down with your family and, and, and talking with them up um, what, where you're going to go if uh, mandatory evacuations are, are issued from our LA County Fire Department personnel. So part of what we considered in building out this uh, drill was identifying uh, the amount of resources we needed to facilitate uh, as a realistic drill, uh, minus the fire, of course. So in doing so, we, we build uh, resources to fill um, a fire line. Um, and so we tried to use three engines on each side. So we, we had a total of five to six engines today. Uh, we also had a paramedic squad that uses uh, we use for our medical component. And it's, a lot of that is for in case we get a, a hiker caught up into a fire in real life, uh, we'll have a, a medical unit for those folks. And if any of our folks get hurt or injured on the line as well, we can address that with that paramedic squad. Uh, today, we also had some support from our utility drivers to handle some of the logistics, handle some of the traffic uh, issues that we have when we do drills in, in uh, these areas right off the uh, PV South here. And uh, we also invited some of the battalion chiefs from the outside agencies as well. And we also had our safety officer for the region. He's a regional safety and training officer, and he helped... Uh, with our uh, safety message today. Uh, typically when we do fight these brush fires, um, we're happier when it's flat ground. Uh, and for this drill today, the trail we worked on was relatively flat. We did have some uh, steep hills on the other flank, the other side of the drill. Uh, but yes, uneven ground, loose ground is always an issue for us. Uh, we try to be in the best shape that we can. That's part of getting ready for the fire season is acclimating to the weather while we're doing vigorous uh, training. Um, but that doesn't mean we're not susceptible to injury and exertion and heat illness and exertion is a big problem for us, especially when we work in higher temperatures. Today's a nice day to train. It's not that bad, but when we do, uh, um, yeah, we, we just like to stay in the best shape we can to avoid that. My name is Brian Griffiths. I'm with Fire Station 2 in Palos Verdes. It's my engineer, Pete Torres, and I've been on 25 years. We have to get two lines up the side of mountain, one left side, one right side. That's our main goal for that progressive hose lay. So it takes all of us and all that hose to gather it, and we do a progressive hose lay together with different departments. It worked out great today, and it will help when the fire season starts so we can you know, do a quick attack on a, on a fire. So for me, it's, it's good practice. We ha I haven't done this in a while, so this is uh, perfect practice. And we're working, like Brian said, with, with other agencies and stuff. So, so we get used to working with different agencies, uh, which we will do on strike teams. We have uh, been around here with things break out. And uh, fortunately, we have really good crews around here, all highly trained. LA County's got to be one of the best fire departments for brush in the world, we're known. So we're going to keep practicing, and we just really, really would like the residents to help us out and, and clear their areas and ask, ask us what we can do for them. My name is Dave Begarin. I'm a captain at Fire Station 83 in Merrill West. Uh, today, we had our Division I brush drill, and it's good for us to get out here and practice our skills that we may um, be a little bit rusty in. At the beginning of brush season, it's always good to get out here and train with other departments also. We had Torrance Redondo Beach participating today. And the fuel here is, looks like they've done a better job this year of um, maintaining it, keeping the trails clear. But we just want everyone to be fire safe all year round. First of all, no, no open flames in a high severity hazard zone. Um, you know, be mindful of throwing out coals from a barbecue. That seems to always get people. Um, and then the biggest thing, we'll be coming out next month and doing our brush inspections. And what we want is a defensible space. You know, it's a, sometimes it comes at a cost to the homeowners to clear brush around their house, but it's, it allows us to work safely around the house and be able to save houses when a fire does come through. So when we, so when we arrive, our, our battalion chiefs arrive on scene, what they, what they first will do is an incident will be established. So the incident will give, be given a name It'll give a location. Usually it's on a location on where it is or what, what the type of building it is or what type of structure or what, what it is. But usually 
the incident is given a name. The chief will come back here and so we have a work board, what, what they use to work off of, how many resources are coming in, um, if it's a building fire, if it's a brush fire like we just had right now. Um, just we're able to track all of our resources here. One of the coolest things now about this vehicle is we've put a TV on here to not only monitor the news, but when we have uh, like maybe like a drone up, up, up in the air, we can see uh, aerial shot of what's going on also on the incident. Um, we have 22 battalions in the county. This is one of our, uh, our command vehicles out in uh, Battalion 14 here in Palos Verdes. Uh, so we have different radios. All of our different radios are UHF, VHF, our VHF2. So a command channel or a command frequency is given when uh, when the calls are when the calls are given out. So brush fire, structure fire, hazardous material incident. If we have an incident that might maybe have um, multi-casualty people, everything is given a command channel, a tactical channel, a secondary tactical channel. Uh, channel for uh, what we call RIC, which is a rapid intervention crew. And we can monitor and track all of this right here. The iPad is actually, it's what we call an MDC, or it's a, it's a terminal, so we can notice, know what resources are coming in at the time of uh, an accident. Brian Bennett, I am a battalion chief assigned here to uh, Ranch Palos Verdes, as well as the four other cities that uh, encompasses the Palos Verdes Peninsula here. Uh, I've been up there about three years and my role is again battalion chief so I'm uh, coordinating the daily duties of our our five fire stations and uh, any of the drills and any resident uh, issues that come up. Just any takeaways you might want to share watching the operation and how you what, what the takeaways are for you. Yeah so you know with just to go, uh, go back a little bit with COVID we've been uh, our drills, ha we haven't been able to do uh, multi-company drills, and we actually had South Bay Resources, who would actually be on one of our uh, assignments here. We haven't been able to have multi-agency multi -agency coordination drills, and so we're, we're back, and we really like to do this, and we try to practice as we play, and so this is one of the things that is um, one of our high priorities, and that is the any uh, brush drills for Rancho Palos Verdes because we definitely see the potential here and uh, we want to, you know, different times of the year, two or three times a year, we come in and, and actually put our hose on the ground, have uh, resources that are assigned and, and try to make it as real as possible. What is your knowledge of the background on some of the couple that we know of a couple big fires? Can you take us back yeah, in history a little bit sure. about, especially right here at the preserve? Yeah, so uh, I believe the last one was 2009. It was about 300 acres. It was a large, uh, a very large fire. We had also one in 2000, and then the, the big one, which I believe was 600, that was in the 70s. Uh, last year, I was assigned to um, Battalion 14, and we had a five acre at uh, Palos Verdes Drive South and West and that was probably the largest one over the last couple of years. But, uh, you know, because we drill like this, because we're out here doing it all the time, our uh, local companies got, you know, on scene quick, deployed their hose, and were able to, to keep it to five acres. So yeah, they do a really good job here. Right now, I mean, we always say wildfire season, but it's really like that all year round. We high fire hazard zone, the whole peninsula, yes? Yes, you are a high fire hazard, uh, and that just means that you have uh, homes that are intermixed with brush. And so both sides, Rolling Hills, Rancho Palos Verdes, Rolling Hills Estates, and uh, Palos Verdes Estates all have homes within the brush. And so we call that high fire hazard. And you're right, we are year round. As a matter of fact, this month we've had two uh, brush fires in that Santa Clarita and uh, Antelope Valley that are close to a thousand acres. Years passed in April and June, April, May, June, that was unheard of. So we're year round and we, you know, we take that into consideration and we're now doing year round fire prevention and inspections throughout the hill here. What are the challenges for protecting our community here for you? And so the the, resources yeah, here. so the biggest uh, the biggest challenges for us are the amount of resources and how fast we can get them here. Uh, we have five five fire stations that are uh, up here on the hill, and um, 
we have fires that are in steep canyons that can encroach on the homes very quickly. And so that's why we rely on our Ready, Set, Go defensible space and we put it back on you, the homeowners in the city, to make sure that you, you give us that defensible space so that we have the time to get our resources there and, and uh, protect your homes. So as we've seen this year with our extended drought seasons, even in areas off the coast where we get a higher uh, relative humidity that helps us, uh, we still get that receptive fuel bed uh, and that's that light flashy fuel. And once that is uh, a continuous fuel load that gets into some of the bigger bushes and then the even heavier trees and, and fuels in the canyons, then it's a recipe for you know potential disaster. So again, that's why we're out here training. We, out, we come out here to look at our fuels and get an idea of what we'll be facing when it does happen. Annually, uh, Los Angeles County sends out notifications to those homes that are on declared lists of uh, fire inspections. So when they get that card, it's a reminder to, hey, it's time to get started and get prepared for the fire season. Uh, and then we also come out, uh, the local fire stations will go to those um, properties and we'll evaluate those for compliance. And what the homeowners can do is maintain that compliance and prepare their homes. And we want to see uh, a reduction in fuels that are near the homes themselves and, uh, and meet that, the requirements of the brush inspection. So I, I've been uh, with the fire service with Los Angeles County Fire Department for a little over 19 years. And every year we go out, we see people that could have done a little bit more. Uh, and typically in the intermix areas where the brush meets very close to the homes uh, and the homes are a little, have a little more distance between them, uh, it's the common stuff around the house, the uh, fuels that we add to the home. And that's like patio furniture, uh, uh, firewood that they stack up. Uh, if all those, if it's too close to the home, they're very flashy and they will combust before the home does, but if they get going, it can get the house going. So uh, preparation is everything if you live in those areas. And uh, if that's a good point with preparation is our Ready, Set, Go program. Uh, and it's something we're proud of when we send out, I think in 2009, we uh, implemented that program for the homeowners to prepare themselves. And of course, you can go on the county website, um, on our city website to download that on the internet to get the Ready, Set, Go Yes, program. and fire.lacounty.gov will have it as well, slash uh, RSG, and uh, you can print that off as well. And you can call any local fire station and get that information from them as well. We have flyers that uh, illustrate exactly what we're looking for. Oh, it was a great opportunity. Um, I am new to the structure firefighting. I was on the hand crew for three and a half years. So it's a little bit different of an experience as far as the work uh, that's required uh, with the hose lace. It's a little different than a hand crew experience that I had, but it was a great experience nonetheless, um, specifically to work with our interagency partners, kind of get on the same page and uh, do that training with them. We don't always have the opportunity to train uh, with other departments, and specifically uh, local departments. And so ultimately it's great training for us, but ultimately it just helps the uh, citizens of the peninsula. If we all do arrive on scene, we already have that working relationship. We've already worked together and we already know what needs to get done. So it's a great experience all the way around. Incredible teamwork here. You, you said this is your, not you're not new to this preserve. You've been here before fighting fires. Can you share what happened? Yes. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, originally, I am coming from the camp system. I was there three and a half years, specifically uh, Camp 8 in Malibu. Uh, there we had one of the fire hawks that was assigned to us during the fire season. So we'd actually, uh, as a 10-man crew, we'd fly out here, land, fight the fire, and then uh, once it was uh, knocked down, we'd fly back. So I have been here, uh, I believe, about two or three fires. Usually. Uh, through the teamwork and through the effort, we've kept them pretty small in the last couple of years, which is great, uh, as well as the citizens having great brush clearance behind them has helped out a lot. But yeah, I've had a, a few fires here in the local area. Can you talk a little bit about how you prepare for this kind of a job? Let's face it, we all run away from fires, you're running into it, and we're also grateful that you do what you do, but just can you just share that piece? You know, it's a question that my mom and my wife still ask me all the time, and uh, it just it's a different experience. Uh, prior to this, I was also in the military, so uh, the firefighting in general is uh, definitely a calling and I love the fact that it's not a nine-to-five job you know I get to come here and train with 
different agencies, different experiences. Even uh, many firefighters that we have here in the department have uh, previous experience with other fire agencies before. So just that teamwork is something that I always crave getting out of the military. And then just the uh, arduous work about it, it's kind of that bittersweet. I love it. Um, the fact that I get to help out the citizens and get a hike in at the same time works for me. Most of the people that get into this line of work uh, are confident. Uh, they're a, a bit of a risk taker. Uh, they don't overthink too much or otherwise we wouldn't probably be doing this. So when other people are running outside of the fire, we're running into it. But uh, part of that is, is training and our department does a very good job training us and getting us prepared uh, to be a very progressive fire department and uh, very capable. I'm being joined by our park ranger staff. She's with our Recreation and Parks Department. You just observed this whole operation. What were your takeaways? I thought it was amazing how fast they worked and um, just being an observer, you know, it was amazing to see how strong, how strong you have to be to go up these trails with these hoses that you're carrying. Um, I just thought it was amazing. As the city of Rancho Palos Verdes Emergency Services Coordinator, um, I find great satisfaction in knowing that disaster preparedness can save lives at the end of the day. And um, being prepared for a disaster can really help out our residents during a time of need, and that's what I really gets me through the day to day. Any final messages to the residents of the peninsula watching what they can do actually to make your work safer and easier by doing their job, and just any other safety tips that you want to highlight well, I think when it comes to brush fires and how it impacts the communities in those areas, the biggest thing is that brush clearance compliance. That's the biggest piece. Understanding where your property lines are and what you're responsible for is great. If they can do that part and follow the Ready, Set, Go program as well, because when we decide to evacuate people, we like it to be as organized as can be but that preparation is everything. So if they can get their personal items, their family heirlooms, all that on a list and understand how they can gather that quickly and evacuate when appropriate so that we can uh, get in those areas where the homes are and we won't have to deal with everybody leaving and causing problems with traffic and, and or being stuck in their home and then we have to deal with the personal life. And because when we have someone, in, life is our number one priority, so when they're at home and all of a sudden they get trapped, we have to make that our first priority, which means we have to leave the fire at times. And when the fire keeps growing, then it makes more problems. So if they were to understand the importance of evacuation orders and followed that, that would be very well appreciated. It seems we can't say these three words enough. Ready, set, go. Make sure you're prepared. Go on to the city or LA County Fire Department's website to get all the information you need, how to protect your home in the event of a wildfire or any emergency. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day, everybody.